Hi and welcome back. So I recently donated blood and of course we know that donating blood can possibly save lives. But as I was laying there, watching my blood travel into the collection bag, I started wondering if donating blood had any benefits as far as health or longevity benefits to the donor. Sort of like out with the old, in with the new. So as soon as I came home, I started researching. And sure enough, I came across quite a few studies suggesting that donating blood can help reduce the risk of developing heart disease, liver disease, and certain cancers. But one study I came across, I found particularly interesting. This study was published in Mechanism of Aging and Development and conducted by several scientists at the Nanjing University in China. And one thing this study showed is that donating blood reduces the prevalence of senescent cells. Now, if you have been here for a little while, you have heard me talk about senescent cells. Senescent cells are also known as zombie cells. They are cells that stop dividing, but don't die. And as we age, we accumulate these senescent cells in our tissues and of course our blood. The problem with senescent cells is that they secrete a highly inflammatory cocktail of chemicals, also known as senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or SASP. And of course we know that inflammation, especially low-grade chronic inflammation, is at the root of every age-related disease, including aging itself. So reducing senescent cells can therefore help ward off some of these age-related diseases. Now, this study was done on mice, on 46-week-old male mice, to be specific, which is about the equivalent of an 80-year-old human. And to mimic blood donation, they drained 0.1 to 0.2 milliliters, which translates to about 500 milliliters of blood donated by humans from the cheeks of these little guys every two weeks for six weeks. And they found that donating blood not only reduced the prevalence of senescent cells, but draining blood from mice significantly reduced their blood iron content and increased levels of anti-inflammatory proteins in the blood. And it increased the levels of collagen in their skin. In fact, draining blood almost doubled the amount of structural collagen. It also doubled dermal thickness. The scientists concluded that this provided strong evidence that bloodletting from mice improves the health of their skin and may offer anti-aging benefits. They went on to say that if these findings apply to humans, they could mean that people use blood donation or other ways to drain blood from the body as skin anti-aging techniques. So donating blood cannot just help save lives, but it reduces the amount of senescent cells causing inflammation, it increases anti-inflammatory proteins, and it helps rejuvenate skin, helps with collagen production, and an increase in dermal thickness at least in mice. I did, however, come across some somewhat related human studies. One particular study suggests that the intense decline in collagen we experience when we first hit menopause. So in the first five years of menopause, we lose 30% of our collagen. And we used to think that this intense decline in collagen was due to a drop in estrogen levels. However, this study suggests that it is not just plummeting estrogen, but high ferritin levels due to cessation of menstruation, which can be blamed for this intense decline in collagen. So because women no longer have regular periods, excess iron accumulates in the skin, which enhances oxidative stress when exposed to UV radiation and affects downstream genes which further promote skin photoaging. So while the previous study showing that donating blood can help with skin rejuvenation, 
collagen production and an increase in dermal thickness was done on mice, there does seem to be a connection between high ferritin levels and with that excess iron accumulation in the skin and skin aging. And of course we know that donating blood is a great way to rid the body of excess iron. In fact, with every blood donation, about 250 milligrams of excess iron are removed from the body. And I did come across some studies suggesting that ferritin levels increase with aging as part of a low-grade chronic inflammatory state, also known as inflammaging. So by donating blood and ridding the body of some excess iron, and by reducing the amount of senescent cells accumulating in our system, we can reduce inflammaging. And ridding the body of some excess iron can also help reduce the risk of developing heart disease. In fact, one study showed that donating blood once a year can help reduce the risk of developing heart disease by 88%. On top of that, ridding the body of some excess iron can help reduce the risk of developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well as certain cancers. And of course, donating blood, knowing we are possibly saving lives, makes us feel good about ourselves, which is good for our mental state, and, and that in itself is a great benefit. So I hope this video inspired you to donate some blood. Again, not only are we possibly saving lives, in fact, one blood donation can save up to three lives, but there are so many benefits to the donor. From reducing the risk of developing heart disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, certain cancers, to possibly rejuvenating our skin, increasing collagen production and dermal thickness, to cutting down on inflammation. So I hope this video was helpful. I would love to know, do you donate blood? And if so, have you noticed any health benefits? Please share down below. Any questions or comments, of course, please share them down below. You know, I always love to hear from you. And that's it for this video. And thank you so much for being here. Until next time, bye.